Now, if you notice the waves breaking there, you'll also perhaps perceive the fact that right where she is, the waves are backing off a little bit. You see that? So there is a little deep part there, and she's trying to swim to that board, and she's not making very good progress, and that is her stroke. And for the lifeguards out there, I know this is hard to watch. You want to dive into the screen and make this rescue. The lifeguard was called back in from... They were in the service yard servicing the vehicle. This is a a gentleman named Micah Moore. He was a rookie the previous year. This is literally his first day back to work in March on his second year of lifeguarding. And you can see her head in the distance. And as he's he's making his way to her now, he's going to turn and put on his fins here and swim out to her. I want you to try to keep an eye on her head because you will see that she is struggling and struggling and struggling. And just before he gets to her, she will submerge. Now, Moore is at sea level, so he is swimming for what he can see, and that right now is the board. I interviewed him after this. I was actually on scene for this later, but this footage was taken by a bystander. He goes to the board, and then watch in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see the head submerge, or pop out one more time, and then she's gone. He swims to where he last sees her, There it is. There she pops up, and now she's submerging and sinking, and Moore goes down. He dives, the buoy goes still, and he comes up with the victim. He signals for help, and he starts giving breaths in the water. Could not have done better on that rescue. That's exactly what he should do. San Diego City lifeguards received a 911 call. They back us up on this. This is Sergeant Eric Kerr here who's already stripped down to his reds, he's ready to go, and he's gonna paddle out. Now, the second lifeguard going out here is this, again, the state guard, uh, who was the vehicle operator. She has been delayed because she's making all the radio calls. She's notifying uh, our dispatcher that there has been a submersion. What they thought at this time was a double drowning, if not a triple drowning. The, The information was very sporadic. She's going on what she had. She made all the calls requesting helicopter support, boat support, neighboring lifeguard agencies responding, any lifeguards available that are still on duty with the state. Again, at five o'clock in March, you know, there's just a couple of units left. The towers are not being uh, operated on those days. And then she starts making her way out. Care gets to the victim, pulls her by her hair and just pulls her on the board and they immediately turn and get her to shore. Medics are waiting on shore, and now they have a patient that is apneic, but still has a heartbeat. So they're gonna resuscitate her. Interestingly enough, I gave this lecture, I don't know, six years later to a bunch of firefighters that were local, and two of the guys that were on the scene were in the class. So they got to give me some more information. And something that I didn't know is while they were en route to the hospital, she went uh, into cardiac arrest. So she was a full CPR at that point. Anyway, the aftermath of this. On scene, they recover her. She's unconscious. She's submerged. She's apneic, but she has a pulse intact. Ventilations were performed in the water by the initial lifeguard, which was perfect. On shore, they started a line. They intubated her. In other words, secured an airway and resuscitated her versus BVM. She did. She had aspirated, you know, quite a bit of vomit. Again, all drowning patients vomit at some point. And what I didn't put in here that was the added little piece to the puzzle is she was a full, complete cardiac arrest on the way to the hospital. Now, in the hospital, what the ER staff tends to do is we will put people into an induced coma. They will actually keep them sedated. I, I view it as sort of being tied into like the mammalian dive reflex. You know, your tissues are supported. They're... they're there's less stress on the body when you can keep the victim, the heart rate very, very low. And so we literally put the person into a coma and allow their body to sort of recover. The victim is put on a ventilator on a setting called PEEP. And PEEP is when you have on a ventilator and you can increase respirations and you can set the depth of the respiration. On PEEP, you basically have them inhale and leave it there for a second and then let it slowly go out. So inhale, hold, and out. The idea is you can somehow purge a bit of the fluids that are in the lungs and push them back into the circulation. 